See You Now is a podcast highlighting the innovative and human-centered solutions that nurses are coming up with to solve for today's most challenging healthcare problems. Created in collaboration with Johnson & Johnson and the American Nurses Association and hosted by nurse economist and health tech specialist, Shauna Butler. I'm Shauna Butler, the host of See You Now, a podcast that shines a light on how nurses are addressing today's most challenging healthcare problems. And never has that light been as essential as it is at this moment. Over the past few weeks, See You Now paused its regular format so we could share stories of how nurses are responding to the challenges presented by the coronavirus pandemic. Every day, nurses face difficult decisions and navigate complex ethical dilemmas. Nurses know how to deal with suffering. They are accustomed to seeing trauma and pain participating in life and death decisions, and advocating for human rights. But this pandemic has initiated an onslaught of extreme circumstances that no one was prepared for. Things like delaying medical procedures, rationing ventilators, PPE, virus testing kits, and ICU beds, instituting no visitor policies in our hospitals, leaving people dying without families present, human challenge trials for vaccine testing, and weighing personal risk against an obligation to render care. Just so much to consider, weigh, and decide. We asked Liz Stokes, the director of the ANA Center for Ethics and Human Rights, to provide insight into the ethical and moral dimensions of the COVID-19 pandemic. Interestingly, the questions I think are quite similar to other questions. It's the situation of COVID and this pandemic is what makes it completely new. My name is Liz Stokes and I am the director of the American Nurses Association Center for Ethics and Human Rights. One of the foundations of our code of ethics is that nurses advocate, preserve, and protect the human rights of every individual. And that's something that's the foundation of everything that we do. All of the policy, all of the documents that come out of the Center for Ethics and Human Rights are founded in this preservation and protection of human rights. One of the most significant ethical issues that has arisen, and honestly, I don't think we were prepared for this, is how do nurses weigh the risk of their own personal health, their own personal safety, and possibly exposure to their families, their loved ones? How do nurses weigh that risk with their professional obligation to care for patients? This is what nurses do. This is a pandemic. Many nurses are eager to go out and to fight this pandemic and to care for patients and absolutely put their heart and soul into everything that we can do to save people from this pandemic. At the same time, because they're in such hazardous conditions, they're really risking so much of themselves and so much of their families in order to do that. And we get tons of emails from nurses around the world that are reaching out to us to say, I need ethical guidance on this situation. And we can see the themes. We're pulling out the themes, we're pulling out the information where nurses are really afraid to go to work. They're afraid because they don't have enough PPE. They're afraid to go back to their homes. They may have young children or elderly parents, and they're not sure what to do. They're not sure if I stay or do I leave, do I quit? And so they're really seeking guidance to help make these decisions. When we look at nursing traditionally, nurses are already exposed to moral distress, exposed to compassion fatigue, burnout. There's a host of negative psychological consequences related to nursing. And when we think about the issues related to staffing or the issues related to resources or the issues related to nurses being prevented from providing the care that they want to deliver, that's what causes moral injury. When we're facing this COVID-19 pandemic, it exacerbates 
a whole host of emotions. If you're thinking about a nurse who is going to work every single day, and again, risking his or her own personal safety, but then also the physical conditions that they're working in. So they're working in a mask, they're working in a face covering, or they're working in these really hot gowns. I had a nurse talk to me last week and she said, I was so hot underneath this mask that I had anxiety and I couldn't breathe. And then I thought, oh my God, do I have COVID? So it's like, you know, there's all these components. So you compound all of those physical things with underlying nurses don't get enough breaks, they don't get to have their meals, which is kind of, you know, the traditional nursing issues that happen. So you combine all of that, now you're wearing a suit, and now you're dealing with this tremendous emotional aspect of COVID. Patients that are really, really sick, and they're really, really sick fast. And I think when we're looking at the full trajectory of this, we have a host of patients. There are hospitals that have hundreds of incredibly sick COVID-19 patients. And nurses are dealing with this. Nurses are dealing with patients that are passing away without their families. And nurses are there beside the patient at their last breath. And the emotional toll combined with the physical toll is absolutely unimaginable. And so when I think about moral injury, I think about right now nurses are pushing through it's similar to battlefield medicine when you're in the front line and you know that you have a war in front of you and you know you have to continue and fight through to get through this to get to the other side it's when things start to die down that it really starts to hit you this is what's going to happen to a lot of nurses I had a nurse contact me and was feeling tremendous guilt over quitting her job. She felt tremendous guilt because she was leaving her friends and her colleagues. She felt tremendous guilt because she was leaving her patients, but she felt that the risk for her own personal safety and her family, she had young children, was too great. And. I asked her, what was the response from your colleagues and from your support system? And she said, I have been supported. And that is the key message, is that we have to support everyone in these efforts. When we talk about moral injury, we've got to look beyond nurses that are on the front line, right? It's going to be so many other people that are impacted by COVID-19, not just healthcare workers, but the public in general. It is quite emotionally traumatic. This is going to be something that is going to last a long time. The ANA Center for Ethics and Human Rights was born in the 1980s as a result of a different novel and deadly virus. At that moment in time, the world was gripped by the HIV and AIDS crisis and the ethical dilemmas it presented. And as Liz shared, typically, ethical questions and considerations don't really change. What changes are the times, the technology, and our society. What we're increasingly understanding is that innovation isn't solely technology and economics. It's also, very importantly, ethical and social. Advances as well as disasters in science, technology, and health have always spawned spectacular innovations and equally spectacular ethical concerns and considerations. And in this era of COVID-19, that pattern is likely to repeat itself. Health innovations like digital contact tracing can help identify transmission risk, but may also intrude on personal privacy. Testing new therapies could lead to a breakthrough in the treatment of COVID-19, while at the same time, putting some people's health at risk. Ethics guide us to humanize innovation and increase moral imagination so that our innovation agendas are designed and built around people and communities serving their needs and preserving their rights and dignity. Ethical and responsible innovation is crucial, but it's not always easy. We're in a complex era full of disruption, 
that requires careful consideration of multiple factors, having and following a code of ethics improves our ability to do great and important things that improve and save lives and alleviate suffering. For See You Now, I'm Shauna Butler. Thanks for listening. Johnson & Johnson and the American Nurses Foundation are excited to launch the Coronavirus Response Fund for Nurses. Go to the American Nurses Foundation website to learn more, share, or donate. And thanks.